Hey everyone, when working in Excel, have you ever come across a situation where you need to split out text containing one cell and break it out into multiple cells? In this video, we're going to be going through how you can use the text split function to do just that. And with that said, let's get into the video. In this example, let's say that we're running a lumber store using this inventory spreadsheet. This inventory spreadsheet contains a table with three columns. The first column is the category, the second column is the type of wood along with its quantity, and the third column is the size. And what we want to do here is create a way to retrieve information based on a given category. So here I've listed all the categories in a drop-down list, and what we want to do is not only retrieve the information as is, we want to be able to format it in a way that's much nicer to look at. For example, we want to take the text that's currently within one cell and we want to split the type of wood and quantity into its own separate columns. And in addition to that, we also want to split the different types of wood themselves into their own separate rows. So to do this, we'll be using the text split function. So in this cell here, let's enter in the text split function and take a look at its arguments. The first argument is the text that we want to split into their own separate cells. Now to make this formula dynamic and change based on the category selected, let's go ahead and use the xlookup function. And if you want to see more details on the xlookup function, you can check out the video up here. So with the xlookup function, our lookup value would be the category, and the lookup array is going to be the cell range of our categories, and the return array is going to be the cell range of our types of wood and quantity. So closing that function off, we can move on to the next argument, which is column delimiter. So this is what we want to split the text by so that they show up in different columns. Looking at the initial data, we can see that even though the text is all contained within one cell, the type of wood and its quantity is separated by this pipe symbol. So that's what we're going to enter in here. Closing off the function and pressing enter, we get this result shown to us. And what we can see here is that pine is in its own cell, which is okay, but then we see 50, a semicolon, and spruce in its own cell, 60, a semicolon, and fir in its own cell, and 40 all by itself. So the next step for us is to not only separate out these pieces of text into columns, but also separate them out so that the type of wood goes into their own separate rows. So going back into our formula and taking a look at the initial data again, we can see that the semicolon and a space are what separate the quantity and the next type of wood. So in this row delimiter argument, we're going to enter in a semicolon, a space, and then we'll press enter, and then we get this result shown to us. So now we get a nicely formatted data set where the types of wood and quantity are separated into their own columns, and the different types of wood themselves are separated out into different rows. Now let's select a different category and see how the results change. Wait, what's going on here? We can see oak showing up properly, but there's an empty cell down here, and cherry doesn't have its quantity split out into its own cell. So the empty cell is actually pretty easy to deal with. We can just go back into our formula, and in this ignore empty argument, we can type in true, and then press enter. Now the reason why cherry and 20 are not split into their own separate columns is because what separates cherry and the quantity is a slash rather than a pipe symbol. So to fix this, we can go back into our formula, and we can actually add another delimiter in addition to our pipe symbol by using these curly brackets. Pressing enter, we've now removed the empty row and we've accommodated the slash that separates cherry and 20. All right, so now that softwood and hardwood categories are okay, let's see what compasses shows us. Oh no, we can't catch a break. What is this error doing here next to particle? Taking a look at the data, we see that for each type of wood, there is a pipe symbol next to it, except for particle, and that's what's causing the error. Going back into our formula, we can use this argument here called pad width. And with pad width, we can replace the error with something like a zero. Pressing enter, the error goes away and is now replaced with a zero. So now cycling through the different categories, we can see that the information is much nicer to look at than before. And that's because each type of wood and its quantity are split into their own columns, and the types of wood themselves are split into their own rows. Now there is one more argument in the text split function that we skipped over, and that is match mode. So to demonstrate when to use it, let's use the split text function to split the size into its thickness and width. So in this cell here, let's enter in the text split function, and we're gonna enter in the xlook function again, 
so that the text that we're splitting is dependent on the category. So our lookup array is still going to be the list of categories, and the return array is going to be the cell range with our sizes. So closing that off and moving on to the column delimiter argument, looking at our data, it looks like an X is what separates the thickness and the width, so we'll enter in a lowercase x. Closing that function off and pressing enter, we now successfully split the thickness and width into their own separate cells. Now taking a look at the other categories, such as hardwood, the thickness changes as well. But then when we look at softwood, we see that the thickness and width have not been split. So going back into our formula, we're going to use that match mode argument. So it's using commas to skip through these arguments. And in the match mode, we're going to select case insensitive match. Now pressing enter, we now are able to split the thickness and width because it doesn't matter if you're using a lowercase or uppercase letter. And now we've successfully created a way to extract information in a nicely formatted way. And that's how you use the text split function in Microsoft Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.